The 1967 film, In the Heat of the Night, boasted a talented production team and stellar cast. Renowned producer Walter Mirisch led the effort, while Sterling Silifan penned the screenplay. Directed by Norman Jewison, the movie brought together acting great Sidney Poitier and Rod Steiger. Based on John Ball's novel, the story unfolds in a small southern town grappling with racial tensions and a mysterious murder. This gripping drama leaves a lasting impression and resonates with audiences to this day. In the 1967 movie, the plot revolves around Virgil Tibbs, a skilled black police detective hailing from Philadelphia. Tibbs finds himself entangled in a murder investigation taking place in a tiny racially charged town located in Mississippi. At the helm of the local law enforcement in this sleepy southern town is Bill Gillespie, played by Rod Steiger. Known for his constant gum chewing throughout the movie, it was actually the director's suggestion for Steiger to adopt this quirk. Initially reluctant, Steiger grew fond of the habit, ultimately consuming a staggering 263 packs of gum while filming. This distinctive trait added an extra layer of nuance to Steiger's complex portrayal of Chief Gillespie. In 1967, the movie industry witnessed a significant shift in lighting innovation, particularly for actors with darker complexions. This change came to light, quite literally, through the efforts of cinematographer Haskell Wexler in the film. Wexler recognized the necessity of employing unique lighting techniques to accentuate the performance of Sidney Poitier, one of the lead actors who had dark skin. Until then, most films were illuminated uniformly, often resulting in overexposure or loss of detail in scenes featuring African-American actors. However, Wexler challenged this status quo by meticulously adjusting the lights to bring out the subtle facial expressions and features of Poitier, which until then remained unnoticed or underappreciated. This approach marked a turning point in cinema history, paving the way for more inclusive representation both in front of and behind the camera. By treating all performers equally regarding lighting design, the film demonstrated respect for diversity and equality. Moreover, it underscored the importance of technical expertise in enhancing storytelling, proving that visual aesthetics could significantly impact audience engagement. To achieve these results, Wexler used specific lighting equipment like softboxes and umbrellas to diffuse harsh light, thereby avoiding unwanted shadows or glare on the actors' faces. He also positioned the key lights strategically to highlight the contours of the face, drawing attention to emotional cues conveyed through facial expressions. These innovations revolutionized how movies depicted people of color, setting new standards for future productions. In conclusion, the 1967 movie stands out as a pioneering force in lighting innovation, breaking barriers and challenging stereotypes associated with lighting in Hollywood. Its influence continues to resonate today, serving as a reminder of the power of inclusivity and technological advancement in shaping compelling narratives. The visual style of the movie sets it apart, featuring a distinctive soap opera-like appearance attributed to its specific lighting and other elements. Notably, Sidney Poitier declined to film in Mississippi because of a harrowing encounter he had there with Harry Belafonte. As a result, the production team chose Sparta, Illinois as the main filming location, with select scenes also captured in Tennessee. During the production of the movie, the crew encountered several challenges while filming in Tennessee. Local thugs posed a significant threat, leading the team to cut their stay short and return to the safety of Illinois. This unexpected change forced the cast and crew to adapt quickly, causing delays and increasing costs. One notable challenge involved creating realistic night scenes during the autumn season. To prevent actors' breath from being visible on camera, they were required to hold ice chips in their mouths between takes. This uncommon technique helped maintain the illusion of warm summer nights depicted in the storyline. Despite these difficulties, the cast and crew persevered through the unfavorable conditions and completed the movie. In the months leading up to the release of the movie, distributors had concerns about showing it in the southern states due to its racial themes. They feared that it could spark trouble and even violence among audiences. However, these fears proved unfounded as there were no reports of disturbances at any of the venues where the movie was shown. The film featured a talented cast, including Sidney Poitier, who played the lead role. Poitier was particularly impressed by the performance of fellow actor Scott Wilson, who played a supporting role in the movie. So much so, that he recommended Wilson for the leading role in another film called In Cold Blood. Unbeknownst to Wilson, Poitier had put his name forward for the part. It wasn't until after he had been cast in In Cold Blood that Wilson learned of Poitier's endorsement. 
This turned out to be a significant break for Wilson, as in Cold Blood became a landmark film in his career. Despite the controversy surrounding the movie's theme, it went on to become a critical success and won several awards, including the prestigious Academy Award for Best Picture. The film's exploration of race relations resonated with audiences and remains relevant today, serving as a reminder of the struggles faced by African Americans during that era. All in all, the movie left an indelible mark on American cinema and continues to inspire discussions around racism and social justice. Rod Steiger's portrayal of the shrewd detective Virgil Tibbs in the movie was partly inspired by the caricature of a southern sheriff used in 1960s advertisements for Dodge vehicles. However, Steiger opted to tone down the comical elements of the stereotype, resulting in a more nuanced performance. This approach added depth to his character and elevated the overall quality of the production. Interestingly, the music selection for the film underwent some changes during its development. Initially, Little Red Riding Hood by Sam the Sham had been chosen to accompany certain scenes. However, due to licensing concerns, it was ultimately replaced by Quincy Jones' Foul Owl on the Prowl, performed by Boomer Castleman and Michael Martin Murphy. This tune provided a fitting backdrop for several key moments in the storyline. These adjustments demonstrate the importance of attention to detail when creating a cinematic experience, ensuring every aspect complements the narrative and enhances audience engagement. In the now famous slap scene of the movie, Virgil Tibbs, played by Sidney Poitier, finds himself in a tense confrontation with local town patriarch Eric Endicott, portrayed by Larry Gates. After Endicott uses a racial epithet towards Tibbs, the tension reaches its peak when Endicott slaps Tibbs across the face. However, what follows next sets the scene apart from the source material, Tibbs unexpectedly retaliates with a sharp slap of his own. This decision, pushed for by Poitier, was a powerful statement against the passive representation of black men in media at the time. The scene was captured in just two takes, both of which featured actual slaps exchanged between the actors. While it may seem commonplace today, this raw display of emotion and physicality was groundbreaking for its time, leaving a lasting impact on audiences and critics alike. Another defining moment in this pivotal scene occurs when Tibbs declares, they call me Mr. Tibbs. With this assertive statement, he claims his rightful place as a respected professional, refusing to be defined solely by his race. This iconic line has since been recognized as one of the greatest moments in cinematic history, ranking number 76 on AFA's list of the top 100 movie quotes. Through these memorable scenes, the movie transcends its status as mere entertainment, serving as a reflection of social issues during a turbulent era in American history. In 1967, the movie featured a reference to the Gulf Coast Rebel Train, connecting it to actual historical events. This detail adds authenticity and depth to the film's setting. However, one might notice a slight inconsistency regarding Virgil Tibbs' living arrangements. Early in the story, Detective Tibbs mentions he has a mother residing near Sparta, Mississippi. Yet, when faced with staying overnight due to unforeseen circumstances, he checks into a local motel, rather than opting to visit his relative's home. While seemingly insignificant, keen observers may question why Tibbs wouldn't choose to stay with family, especially considering potential racial prejudices against him during that era. This discrepancy doesn't detract significantly from the overall narrative, yet it does raise questions about the character's decision-making process and personal preferences. Despite this minor inconsistency, the movie remains impactful and engaging, leaving audiences captivated by its exploration of race relations and crime-solving set against the backdrop of Southern America. Indeed, even smaller details like these cannot diminish the power of such a compelling cinematic experience. After all, every production has room for improvement, and focusing too much on minor flaws risks overlooking the broader picture painted so vividly throughout the film. In a sneak preview of the movie, audiences responded unexpectedly to certain scenes, leading to some initial confusion. Specifically, during tense moments between the sheriff and the detective, viewers would burst into laughter. This left the director perplexed until he realized that they were finding humor in the sheriff's discomfort and subsequent realization of being outsmarted by the detective. One character who received significant attention for her portrayal was the widow of the murdered industrialist, played by actress Lee Grant. Her performance was particularly powerful due to her own personal experiences with discrimination and marginalization. In 1951, Grant had been blacklisted, effectively barring her from working in Hollywood for over a decade. As a result, 
Her role in the movie marked her triumphant return to the big screen, giving her a chance to channel years of pent-up frustration and anger into her performance. Grant's emotional intensity resonated deeply with audiences, making her one of the standout performances in the movie. Through her character, she conveyed a sense of defiance against the oppressive forces that sought to silence her voice. Ultimately, her contribution helped elevate the movie to greater heights, solidifying its status as a classic piece of cinema. Despite facing numerous challenges throughout her career, Lee Grant refused to let setbacks define her path forward, paving the way for future generations of actors and artists. Released in 1967, this movie made a significant impact on audiences and critics alike. Set in the South, it presented a gritty depiction of a small town grappling with the uncertainty of the times. The film tackled sensitive subjects like racism, which was reflected in its powerful performances. Sidney Poitier and Rod Steiger delivered memorable acts, earning praise for their nuanced portrayals of complex characters. Their chemistry on screen added depth to the storyline, making it even more compelling. Premiering in New York City on August 2nd of that year, the movie received wide acclaim. Its exploration of racial tensions resonated with many, as it offered a raw look into the realities of discrimination. This portrayal broke new ground in Hollywood, where such topics had previously been avoided or oversimplified. The success of this film marked a turning point in how race relations were addressed in cinema. It served as a catalyst for change, prompting future productions to engage more authentically with these issues. Thus, the movie left an indelible mark on both society and the industry. Released in 1967, the movie quickly gained recognition for its groundbreaking portrayal of race relations in America during that time. It tells the story of a black detective from Philadelphia who becomes involved in a murder investigation in a small southern town, facing discrimination and hostility along the way. The film was a critical success, earning five Academy Awards including Best Picture. Its depiction of racial tension and prejudice resonated with audiences and sparked conversations about these issues in society. The movie star, Sidney Poitier, became the first African-American to win the Oscar for Best Actor, marking a significant moment in Hollywood history. Despite being over 50 years old, the movie remains relevant today due to its powerful message against racism and stereotypes. Its exploration of systemic inequality continues to inspire discussions on social justice, making it a timeless piece of cinema. Additionally, the movie paved the way for more diverse representation in Hollywood, both in front of and behind the camera. Overall, the movie left a lasting impact on the industry and society as a whole. Its themes continue to resonate with viewers, reminding us of the importance of equality, respect, and understanding towards people of all backgrounds. Let's dive into the fascinating cast assembly for the 1967 classic, In the Heat of the Night. The film's lead, Virgil Tibbs, was played by Sidney Poitier. Director Norman Jewison had seen Poitier's work before and knew he was perfect for the role. Poitier's reputation as a serious and powerful actor made him an easy choice. For the part of police chief Bill Gillespie, Rod Steiger was selected after a series of screen tests. His ability to portray a complex character, balancing between hostility and respect for Tibbs, won him the role. Lee Grant, who played Mistress Leslie Colbert, went through several auditions before being cast. Her subtle yet impactful performance added depth to the film's exploration of race relations in the South. Quentin Dean, who played Beatrice Bo Brannigan, was discovered while working as a waitress. A talent scout noticed her and suggested she audition for the role, which she ultimately secured. The casting of the small town's mayor, Mr. Schubert, caused some initial difficulties. Ultimately, Larry Gates was chosen for his ability to convey authority and integrity, fitting perfectly with the character's political standing. Interestingly, many actors were considered for smaller roles, including Warren Oates, William Schaller, and James Patterson, ensuring that every character contributed significantly to the film's narrative. During rehearsals, the cast underwent extensive chemistry tests, refining their on-screen relationships. These exercises helped create the palpable tension between Poitier and Steiger, defining one of the most memorable aspects of the movie. The result was a compelling drama featuring nuanced performances that continue to resonate today, 
all thanks to a carefully curated cast assembled with precision and foresight. Directed by Norman Jewison, In the Heat of the Night became a classic film capturing social tensions of its time. Jewison was drawn to John Ball's novel due to its exploration of racial prejudice in America. Jewison's documentary background influenced his approach. He aimed for authenticity. He scouted locations in the South to capture the essence of the setting accurately. His decision to shoot in Sparta, Illinois, added grit and realism often absent from Hollywood productions. The director worked closely with cinematographer Haskell Wexler, employing innovative techniques like shooting scenes handheld to create intimacy between viewers and characters. This choice gave audiences a first-hand look into the unfolding drama. Collaboration extended beyond tech teams. Sidney Poitier, starring as Virgil Tibbs, played a significant role in crafting the character. Initially introduced as a minor character, Poitier proposed changes making Tibbs more central and assertive. Recognizing the value of these suggestions, Jewison incorporated them seamlessly into the narrative. Moreover, Rod Steiger, who portrayed police chief Bill Gillespie, contributed significantly too. Known for method acting, Steiger developed unique mannerisms for Gillespie, including his distinctive southern drawl. These nuances enriched the character immeasurably, further enhancing the audience's engagement. Musically, Quincy Jones provided a hauntingly beautiful score, underscored by jazz elements reflective of the era. Together, all these components formed a powerful tapestry depicting race relations against the backdrop of simmering tension and conflict resolution through unexpected partnerships. The production of In the Heat of the Night took place primarily in Illinois and Tennessee during 1967. Set designers transformed ordinary locations into the fictional town of Sparta, Mississippi where most of the story unfolds. They converted a small Illinois city into a southern community by painting buildings with warm colors and adding period-specific details like wooden porches and vintage signs. Filming also occurred in Dyersburg, Tennessee, which posed some logistical challenges due to its remote location. Producers had to arrange accommodations and transportation for cast and crew members relocating temporarily. Additionally, they needed permission from local authorities to close off streets or take over public spaces for shooting scenes. One notable scene required constructing a functional train station on an unused railway line. This involved building a platform, installing lights, and even acquiring a real train, all within a tight schedule. Despite these hurdles, the team managed to complete the task seamlessly, contributing significantly to the movie's authentic feel. As for technological innovations, In the Heat of the Night was one of the first films to employ zoom lenses extensively, Zooming allowed cinematographers greater flexibility when framing shots, reducing the need for time-consuming physical camera movements or lens changes. Consequently, scenes could be captured more efficiently, keeping the shoot on schedule while maintaining artistic control. The creation of the musical score for In the Heat of the Night was a collaboration between legendary composer Quincy Jones and tenor saxophonist Benny Carter. Both had extensive experience in jazz and pop music, which they brought to the film's dramatic setting in the racially charged South. Jones, known for his work on shows like I Spy, aimed to craft a score that mirrored the story's tension and emotion. He turned to Carter, who provided key contributions through his evocative sax solos. These haunting melodies underscored critical scenes, amplifying the character's feelings and propelling the narrative forward. Carter's improvisation during recording sessions proved crucial. His adaptability allowed him to create themes fitting various moods, suspicion, fear, or resolution. For instance, the main theme starts with slow, tense notes, but quickens its pace towards the end, reflecting the protagonist's growing confidence amidst adversity. Interestingly, neither Jones nor Carter watched the movie while scoring it due to tight post-production schedules. Instead, they relied on detailed descriptions from director Norman Jewison about each scene's context and emotional content. This approach resulted in a score independent of visual cues, standing alone as a powerful artistic expression. Quincy Jones once shared, We didn't have time to look at dailies, but we got the spirit of what was happening. This sentiment encapsulates their successful attempt to musically capture the essence of Anna Feet of the Night, enhancing its resonance with audiences then and now. One of the most iconic scenes in And the Heat of the Night comes early in the film. Virgil Tibbs, played by Sidney Poitier, is accused of murder and brought to the police station in Sparta, Mississippi. There, he meets Chief Bill Gillespie, portrayed by Rod Steiger. In this tense encounter, Tibbs proves his intelligence and competence to the skeptical local law enforcement. 
Director Norman Jewison uses close-ups to capture the intensity of the exchange between Poitier and Steiger. He also employs a slow zoom to heighten the tension, highlighting the contrasting reactions of the two men. Cinematographer Haskell Wexler's muted color palette adds to the gritty atmosphere of the scene. Poitier's understated, yet powerful performance showcases his character's self-assurance and determination. His subtle gestures and sharp dialogue reveal Tibbs' growing frustration with the bigotry and ignorance around him. Meanwhile, Steiger's nuanced portrayal captures Gillespie's initial hostility, which gradually gives way to grudging respect. Jewison recalls how he wanted to create a sense of intimacy amidst the escalating conflict tried to keep it personal. I didn't want to get into a shouting match. This approach pays off, making the confrontation deeply resonant and memorable. Another unforgettable moment occurs when Tibbs slaps Mr. Endicott, a wealthy plantation owner, after being insulted during an investigation. This act of defiance challenges racial norms and underscores Tibbs' refusal to be mistreated. According to Poirier, the slap was crucial because it said everything about the rage and indignity that black people felt every day. The film ultimately transcends its time period, offering timeless insights on race relations and human dignity. Through thoughtful direction, compelling performances, and evocative visuals, In the Heat of the Night leaves an indelible mark on audiences, inviting reflection and discussion long after the credits roll. In the Heart of the Night, a groundbreaking 1967 movie, left a significant imprint on American society and culture. Starring Sidney Poitier as Virgil Tibbs, a black detective who becomes involved in a murder investigation in a small Mississippi town, the film tackled racial prejudice and stereotypes head-on. Audiences were captivated by its gripping storyline and powerful performances, which challenged societal norms and sparked conversations about race relations during a time of great upheaval in America. The film's release coincided with the civil rights movement, making it particularly poignant for many viewers. Its exploration of racial tensions and discrimination struck a chord with audiences, prompting them to question their own biases and consider the experiences of those different from themselves. Moreover, in the heat of the night shattered preconceived notions about black masculinity and intellectualism, offering a fresh perspective on African-American representation in Hollywood. As a result, the movie had a profound influence on popular culture. Characters like Virgil Tibbs became symbols of resistance against systemic racism, inspiring future generations of activists and artists alike. Additionally, the iconic line they call me Mr. Tibbs echoed through living rooms across the country, becoming a rallying cry for those seeking justice and equality. Furthermore, In the Heat of the Night served as a catalyst for broader discussions surrounding social and cultural issues. By presenting a nuanced portrayal of race relations, the film encouraged Americans to engage in honest dialogue about the realities of prejudice and inequality. This discourse ultimately paved the way for greater understanding and progress towards social justice. In conclusion, and the heat of the night proved instrumental in challenging racial narratives and fostering critical dialogues around social equity. Decades later, its impact continues to reverberate throughout our collective consciousness, serving as both a reflection of past struggles and a reminder of the ongoing fight for true equality. In the heat of the night, released in 1967, was met with wide acclaim from both critics and audiences. Noted critic Bosley Crowther of the New York Times praised the film, stating it was carried off with superb professionalism by its cast. He also highlighted Sidney Poirier's performance, noting his character's dignity and authority left a strong impression. The film resonated with audiences too, becoming a surprise box office hit. Its exploration of racial tension and prejudice struck a chord during a time when civil rights were at the forefront of public consciousness in America. Viewers appreciated its bold approach to tackling complex social issues. In the Heat of the Night earned seven Academy Award nominations and took home five statuettes, including Best Picture, Best Actor in a Leading Role, and Best Adapted Screenplay. These accolades underscored the film's impact on American cinema and society. They served as validation for all involved. Director Norman Jewison, actors Poitier and Rod Steiger, screenwriter Sterling Silifant, and others. Their work had transcended the confines of entertainment, sparking conversations about race relations and leaving an indelible mark on cinematic history. Poitier's win marked a significant milestone as he became the first black actor to receive the Oscar for Best Actor. This achievement broke barriers and paved the way for future generations of diverse talent in Hollywood. 
Meanwhile, Jewison's direction skillfully balanced suspenseful storytelling with insightful commentary on societal issues, further elevating his status as a respected filmmaker. During the filming of In the Heat of the Night, Sidney Poitier, known for his meticulous preparation, stunned the crew when he arrived on set with a detailed understanding of his character, Virgil Tibbs, even before rehearsals began. This impressed both director Norman Jewison and co-star Rod Steiger. The chemistry between Poitier and Steiger was initially tense due to their contrasting acting styles, Poitier being more restrained while Steiger was demonstrative. However, they eventually found common ground and delivered powerful performances, earning them both Academy Award nominations. Lee Grant, who played Mistress Leslie Colbert, had been blacklisted in Hollywood during the Red Scare era. Her role in In the Heat of the Night marked her comeback, making it a significant milestone in her career. Quincy Jones, then a young composer, created the film's iconic jazz score under difficult circumstances. He was tasked with replacing Ray Charles just days before shooting started, but managed to deliver a memorable soundtrack despite the time constraint. One unforgettable moment occurred offset, when Poitier saved a drowning child during location scouting near Sparta, Mississippi. His quick action solidified his status as a hero both on and off screen. Despite facing challenges like harsh weather conditions and racial tensions prevalent in the South, the cast and crew persevered, resulting in a critically acclaimed masterpiece that transcended its time. In the Heart of the Night, released in 1967, holds a significant position in film history. This groundbreaking movie brought forth a bold depiction of race relations during a time when such conversations were rarely seen on screen. Its director, Norman Jewison, dared to challenge societal norms giving audiences a captivating murder mystery set amidst racial tension. The film's protagonist, Virgil Tibbs, played by Sidney Poitier, was a black detective visiting a small southern town, a stark contrast to the common stereotypes portrayed in Hollywood films up until then. Through this character, the movie showcased African-American intelligence, strength, and dignity, while also addressing deep-seated prejudices present in America during that era. One scene that resonates even today is where Mr. Tibbs confidently asserts his worth by slapping a white man who had earlier disrespected him. This act challenged cinematic conventions and left a lasting impression on viewers. In terms of its influence on future filmmaking, In the Heat of the Night paved the way for more diverse representation both behind and in front of the camera. Filmmakers began tackling complex social issues head-on, often drawing inspiration from this seminal work. Countless movies and TV shows since have explored themes of racism, discrimination, and justice, reflecting the ripple effect caused by this powerful film. Subsequent projects inspired by In the Heat of the Night include numerous crime dramas featuring strong leads of color, like Denzel Washington in Training Day or Viola Davis in How to Get Away with Murder. Even outside the realms of crime drama, we see traces of Tibbs' indomitable spirit echoed in contemporary heroes challenging systemic injustice. Moreover, the Academy Award-winning score by Quincy Jones added emotional depth to the narrative, highlighting how music can significantly contribute to storytelling. Composers continue to build upon these foundational elements when crafting soundtracks today. To sum up, In the Heat of the Night remains an essential piece of cinema that has shaped our cultural consciousness around race, power dynamics, and criminal investigation. By pushing boundaries and sparking necessary discussions about inequality, this influential masterpiece continues to inspire new generations of artists and audience members alike. Did you know that the 1967 classic In the Heat of the Night left a significant mark on many people's lives? We'd love to hear about your personal connections to this groundbreaking film. How has this powerful story affected you? Perhaps it shifted your viewpoint on race relations or made you appreciate the art of acting even more. Maybe it brought back memories of watching movies in a different era. Whatever your experience, we're eager to learn about its influence on you. If you enjoyed reminiscing, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for future trips down memory lane. Let's keep the conversation going. Tell us your story.